I'll just say about trees, <laughs> the, our subject for the day, I could not tell you the difference between an oak tree and a maple tree uh, about a year ago. Well, maybe, maybe an oak and a maple I could distinguish, but I didn't know much about trees at all, and I didn't think much about trees. Um, I was vegetarian for a long time. I, I you know, I, I like trees. I, I, I like, you know, trees are fine. But I, I, I don't know what happened. Well, basically, what happened was there was three trees near my house that were going to be cut down by the electrical company, and somehow I was inspired to lead this little campaign with some friends to try to save the trees. And so we meditated and played music there uh, all day. Uh, from morning till night for two weeks and eventually still National Grid came and cut down the trees so uh, it, it was an unfortunate end but through their life through those trees lives and some of them still live here with me now um, something awoke in me and uh, you know we've all going through a very difficult time uh, as, as the world of you know the dealing with the virus and uh, the challenges that that has presented, but in other ways, it's also created opportunities of insight. And um, I feel like part of that came out because of this. Uh, and I needed to, to get out. I wanted to get out and I wanted to see trees. And so I, I went on a little trip, got in my car and I tried to find the oldest trees in every county along the road. And uh, I, I visited very many trees and botanical gardens. And one of the things I found linking back to what we were discussing, was that the oldest trees in this country are in cemeteries. Cemeteries and trees and life and death, they're always, you know, together. So that was, a, you know, a powerful experience to go to a lot of these cemeteries and visit these trees. And I really just started falling in love with trees. I realized, basically, I realized that there were these great gurus you know, great masters all around us, giving us teachings every single minute of the day and night. And I was, you know, blind and deaf to these things. And then suddenly I've kind of woken up to it. And I, I have to say it's been a, an amazing experience to feel that at any time when I feel down or, or, or you know, worried about something, uh, stressed out, depressed, whatever. If I just take five minutes of a walk amongst the trees, I always feel better. You know, they're exuding this energy and this power, um, whether you want to quantify it in a scientific way as some kind of pheromonal thing or this or that, I don't know. All I know is that when I finish walking amongst the trees, I feel better. So that much is, is clear. Um, so, uh, I, I was thinking, you know, what to talk about, what to discuss. We can have more of a discussion, but for now, what I did was I put together, um, I think, 10 or 11 uh, images of trees that I visited, and I juxtaposed them with some poems, uh, mostly from uh, Murshid's teachings, um, and then I thought I'd play behind that. So it'll be like a, an experience. You can all read the poem on your own and look at the image and then hear the music and because really, you know, being with a tree, there's no way to, to encapsulate that except through poetry, except through music, except through things that are beyond the natural, uh, you know, discourse. Uh, because it's so profound, I feel like, the communion that humans and trees have. I mean, literally, we exist because of them. We're breathing everything they're giving us. Our whole life is based on, without the tree, there's no human. So that, that when you're with them, you really, it's like this feedback and they feel you too. I feel that they know when I'm coming and it's, it's, uh, you know, it, you just have to tune yourself to, to that, that level of, of, of feeling them. So, um, here we go. I want to try to do the screen share. Okay. Looking good. All right. Now the sitar. So the rag that I started playing <clears throat> at the beginning was, um, Rag Hamsa Doni. Hamsa Doni actually is considered a Carnatic rag, although it's become quite common in Hindustani music also. Hamsa Doni means the sound of the swan. 
And uh, in Carnatic music, often it's played at the beginning as a mangalam or an auspicious beginning. So I thought I'd just play a little bit of that. Uh, during this uh, presentation, um, I'll play rag kamaj in Mishra style, like mixed, and maybe a little rag mala also, depending. Uh, <coughs> you never know what's going to happen in Indian music because it's all improvised and uh, by, by the feeling you have to go. So um, mostly it'll be a rag mala based on rag uh, kamaj. Thank you, Pirzia Ji. Namaskar. Thank you. 